first of all, I think smartphones and VR headsets, the, the, the markets are in very different places. And so I think you know, comparing Pixel to Pixel and smartphones to anything we do with VR is, is not, not really a, a valid comparison just yet. Uh, right now, our focus is really on enabling partners. Uh, and in fact, uh, we've been working with partners uh, to build their own uh, Daydream compatible smartphone viewers. Um, we've obviously worked with Lenovo uh, to, to build the standalone headset, and I foresee that continuing to be our approach for the future. Right, but I mean, you have this whole new hardware division now under Rick Osterloh mm -hmm. at Google. Yeah. So, I mean, one would assume that, you know, this team is, you know, cranking away at trying to do their own daydream based headset. It would make sense to me. I mean, do you see that being a step that Google will take? Uh, look, I, you, you can speculate about any number of things Google is working on, and of course we've thought about them all just as you have. Um, nothing to announce, and again, our focus is really on the platform elements of Daydream, building the core software, the core technologies, to enable others to build on top of it. Okay, so you have the standalone headsets mm -hmm. now. The other type of Daydream VR that you have is obviously the smartphone. Yep. In the last year, you came out with an updated uh, headset for the Pixel yeah, and the Samsung the view. S phones. I've used it. it. It's quite good. Are you going to support both directions equally, or do you eventually see them converging? Mm -hmm. We see right now there being this important phase where most people on Earth haven't experienced VR and may not be ready to take the plunge into buying a dedicated and more expensive VR headset. And so smartphone-based VR serves as a, a really, I think, important kind of on-ramp to the VR, uh, the VR world. And so we're going to continue to push hard on smartphone-based VR, um, building on what we've built with Daydream over the last couple of years. With a standalone headset, of course, you can build the displays and the optics and the ergonomics and everything really optimized from the outset for VR. And so we see that hitting a higher bar in terms of quality, performance, and immersion. And I think if you're designing a piece of hardware from scratch for a specific purpose, like VR, you're always going to be able to do more. Uh, and so I don't see the two converging anytime soon. My hope is that over time, standalone headsets get better and have more features and functions. And so does smartphone-based VR. But I think it's hard to imagine the, the two converging um, at really any time, given you're building one to be a smartphone primarily and the other to be a VR headset primarily. And how much does the Solo cost, the Mirage Solo cost? We haven't announced specific pricing yet. I'll just say it'll be under $400. Okay. 